Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Pnyan or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in and I am breathing out. And I am aware I am breathing in. I am aware I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for some time. Shift your awareness to your Brumadhyaya. At the Brumadhyaya, visualize the form of either your Guru or your Ishtadevata or a brightly burning candle flame. And maintaining your awareness on this, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together followed by the Shanti Mantras. Inhale deeply. Oh. Oh. Together, Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Bhunakto Sahavir Yankaravahai Tejas Vina Vadita Masto Ma Vedvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Om Tat Sat. Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, to your brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Om Tat Sat. Namo Narayan. Jai Ho. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Veda Maha, Dhyana Mulam Guru Murtihi, Uja Mulam Guru Padam, Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam, Moksha Mulam Guru Krupa, Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Namunarayan, offering pranam at the feet of Guru. Let us begin this discussion on Bhakti. Although I must say it is a little bit of a contradiction because Bhakti is not something which can be discussed about. Bhakti is something which has to be practiced and experienced. But we are people who have overactive intellect. We have lost connection with the heart. Look at children. They are full of the heart element and they can sense things very quickly. But as we grow up, we lose that ability. And this connection with the heart is the basis of Bhakti. 
and refining this allows us to go deeper and deeper so today we are going to try and understand a little bit more about bhakti and the swadhyaya satra which we are about to undertake what is swadhyaya swadhyaya is something which is the bedrock of spiritual progress if i don't do swadhyaya i will not be able to progress i need to do swadhyaya so that i understand what i am doing i understand how i have to do something and after doing swadhyaya i need to implement that inculcate those qualities in my life and implement them in my actions only then is swadhyaya complete swadhyaya means sw adhyayan self study study of the self by the self for the self we have to do that study and we are the small self limited self but we have to do it for the higher self scriptures say that we have that within us vedanta says but why is all of this essential is it not sufficient for us to be able to earn good money be a very responsible citizen have our own standing do things which will give us joy and happiness and be content this is something which has puzzled human beings from time immemorial they have done everything what they feel is their duty and they have done it to the best of their abilities yet there is something which is found lacking there is something which makes the heart very restless we keep searching for something something or the other makes us feel incomplete and it is this restlessness that prompts us to find out what is the source of our existence who am i and from there begins the journey the inner journey gurudev swami satyanand ji often used to say the real life is within and we begin this journey and this journey many a time comes at the culmination of external achievements i have achieved everything that i could in the external world now what now begin the journey inside and when we start walking on that path then there are questions which come to our mind how do we go there what is the path what not to do what to do and the scriptures have distilled the path by the experience of the masters we are not the first who have this desire to know more to go deeper to have that fulfillment in life there have been people who have had this urge and they have acted on this urge they have given up everything else because they have realized experience that this is all what is worth doing everything for and when that starts happening then they go deeper and deeper and in different methodologies they have attempted to experience that divine vedanta speaks of brahman which is beyond the senses and 
our senses are covered by a mysterious force called Maya. And we have to go beyond Maya, the veil of Maya. In yoga, you speak of going beyond the dimensions of the mind, transcending the mind, the prakriti, into the purusha, into the kaivalya state, where kevalam asti, kevalam asti iti kaivalyam. That's all. The consciousness is expected and is experienced. So now, the idea is getting clear. Oh, this is what we have to do. And then we start walking on this path. And while we are walking on this path, we encounter difficulties. We find, oh, it's not so easy. And we make efforts to try and find solutions. And it has been found that there are solutions. And there are multiple paths. There is not one way. There are multiple ways. And when there are multiple ways, people with different temperaments are able to choose. Once, many thousand years ago, a similar situation took place where there are multiple ways, but things are not very clear. Which path should I choose and what to do? Which is better? There was a time when there was a king who was a conqueror of all directions. He had conquered all the directions. North, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, up and down, everywhere he had control. He was known as Emperor Dasharat. And he had a son who later became Prabhu Shri Ram. As fate would have it, Shri Ram had to go in Vanvas. All of you know this story. When he went into Vanvas, at that time, they came to Panchavati. And in Panchavati, everything was so pleasant. Everything was very nice. And Prabhu once was sitting quietly, happy, blissful. And it is at that time that Lakshman asks the Lord, Oh Lord, I would like to know your true self. They say you are beyond everything. I would like to know your true self. And how can I achieve that? What is the way? It is said that you, there is something known as Vedanta. What all, all that? What is the knowledge? Please explain all these things to me. And I have also heard there is something called as Bhakti. Just let me know about that too. So, the Lord say in a very brief nutshell explains what is the transcendental knowledge. And he says that the knowledge which allows you to transcend the limitations is the knowledge which is spoken of. So, when in the spiritual dimension we speak of knowledge of Jnana, then Jnana is the Adhyatmic Jnana. Jnana is of two types, Para and Apara. Physics, chemistry, biology, botany, zoology, economics, uh, psychology, all these, they are knowledge. They are very good. They are very powerful, no doubt. But they are of the mundane dimension. By the study of history or zoology or sociology or any logic, we will not be able to transcend the limitations of the self. The knowledge which allows us to do that is the is that which is known as Nyan 
इन द आध्यात्मिक टर्मिनोलॉजी सो प्रभु हिंट्स एट दैट एंड देन देर इज अ डिस्कशन अबाउट ईश्वर एंड माया एंड द मेथडोलॉजी ऑफ हाउ वन कैन गो बियॉन्ड दिस बॉन्डेज एंड देर प्रभु श्री राम एक्सप्लेन्स दैट वेन यू फॉलो धर्म देन यू हैव वैराग्य एंड वेन यू हैव वैराग्य देन नॉलेज स्टार्ट दिस नॉलेज आध्यात्मिक नॉलेज स्टार्ट ब्लॉसमिंग एंड वेन दिस नॉलेज स्टार्ट ब्लॉसमिंग देन देर इज लिबरेशन मोक्ष द पाथवे इज क्लियर एंड दैट इज हाउ द वेदास हैव एक्सप्लेन सो इन दिस he has explained everything about the vedantic knowledge which can allow us to go beyond here he also has hinted at yoga how the practice of yoga can actually allow the knowledge to blossom within the knowledge is in the book i am here i keep the book on my head doesn't work i have to do something by which that knowledge is transmitted inside that is adhyayan only when i keep reading that knowledge starts going in and i know oh that is a car that is a dog this is a tree this is an aeroplane it the knowledge is in their book when i internalize that knowledge then i can start utilizing it the process of internalizing the knowledge and implementing it is process of yoga so this is how it has to be done and once you do all of this then you reach me that's what shri ram said so when we do all of this then we are able to go beyond and reach the state of shri ram then he brings in a small caveat he says you had also asked something about bhakti let me just explain to you what bhakti is that by which my heart melts is bhakti whatever you do by which my heart melts away that is bhakti and that is the one which is the joy of the bhaktas so now we have dharma we have vairagya we have yoga and we have gnana and then we have bhakti please remember when we speak of dharma it is not the modern meaning religion it is that which is your inner innate inherent ability attribute which we have to actualize doing that working towards actualizing your potentials your potentials is your dharma so by following dharma vairagya can come in by vairagya you can use the study of yoga to achieve knowledge gnana and through gnana moksha is possible there is a long path but there is a direct path there is a possibility of instant nirvana what is that do that thing by which the heart of the lord melts the moment that happens everything becomes possible that is bhakti and the lord explains that whether it be dharma whether it be 
vairagya whether it be yoga whether it be jnana any of the marga karma marga yoga marga jnana marga they all culminate in bhakti they need the basis of bhakti without bhakti they cannot go beyond but bhakti is that path which begins with bhakti progresses with bhakti culminates in bhakti it does not need anybody else bhakti is independent of anything else you do not know what is my dharma you do not know what is vairagya you do not know what is yoga pranayam and asan pranayam mudra bandha you don't know anything fine you did not get an opportunity to have this knowledge but if you are able to practice bhakti everything is achieved but this bhakti is not so easy getting bhakti is not so easy why is there any precedent over here yes there is precedent there was a lady she was known as shabari when she was very young she was a tribal girl there was a great rishi in their area and she used to go there to the ashram he was her guru and he told her look shabari one day the lord prabhu shri ram will come by this path and you will meet him the discussion was that oh can i have darshan of the lord so she, he told that you have to wait and be ready when he comes he will give you the path how to reach him she was a young girl maybe 10 12 years she construed what her guru told to be true and every day she would freshen up the pathway sprinkle water over there put some flowers make it very nice and decorate it make it attractive prepare food for the lord not for one day not for one month not for one year not even for one decade she was a girl when this happened she became a woman she became mature she started growing slightly old she became old and she became very old 60 70 80 years she had to wait and then for all these many years every day with the same shraddha she would do this people would make fun of her oh she is gone mad she is crazy but my guru has told me and that is going to happen with that conviction she went ahead by doing that there was some change which was taking place within her she was not aware but the change which takes place by following dharma by following vairagya by cultivating the qualities by practicing yoga all those changes were automatically taking place within her she was not even aware and then one day when she was very old hope must have been on the lower side but her heart told no he will come and one day he did come and when he did come it was then that prabhu shri ram gave her the practice of nava vidha bhakti so to receive bhakti she needed an entire lifetime that is how hard bhakti is there is another example 
one of the greatest devotees of the lord is in the form of a crow he is known as kak bhushundi and the story goes that kak bhushundi was convinced that saguna bhakti upasana is the way out wherever he would go everybody would give him the advice of working with the nirguna the transcendental the intellectual and the supra intellectual but his heart was not there he would never manage to connect to it and he kept on searching and one day he met a very great rishi a rishi who existed beyond ages they say that when one age went by one of the hairs on his body would fall off that is how long he used to stay and then he asked this rishi please give me the method by which i can cultivate bhakti to the feet of the lord and then this great rishi started telling again about this in transcendental reality and saying oh bhakti is nothing transcendental reality oh bhakti is nothing transcendental reality kept on doing it in many ways and kak bhushundi was convinced that no bhakti is the way so he kept on arguing and arguing and arguing till a time that the rishi got annoyed and cursed him become a crow fine he was happy with that and he said doesn't matter i am a crow but i will have my shraddha to the lord after testing him that even when he became a crow he did not give up his conviction it was then that the rishi called him aa beta now you are ready to receive the knowledge of bhakti these two stories tell us that bhakti is not so easy i am falling in the love of the lord no it's not easy it is very difficult much more harder than other paths but it is very simple too when we are with the khopdi all we adults are full of intellect the ifs and buts but how does this happen and but why does this happen is this the truth is that not the truth yes then it is very hard for us but if we are like children not childish child like there is a difference between the two when we are child like we connect with the lord and everything happens spontaneously we become the medium we do not push and pull the lord to our things we become the medium of the lord and then things start happening so that is what bhakti is all about and bhakti is so important that without bhakti nothing is worth the achievement which brings us to how the narad bhakti sutras came about and why narad bhakti sutras the entire knowledge which we speak of the spiritual knowledge that comes from the vedas veda vakya pramana so whatever is spoken of in the vedas is the ultimate truth and there was a genius who actually compiled these because the vedas are immemorial they, they, they exist from time immemorial but they are all they were diffused and then somebody compiled them that person was veda vyasa his ability was so great 
that it is said that everything what we see here is just the leftovers of what Ved Vyas had. Vyasot Chishtam Jagat Sarvam. Vyas ji had his meals and whatever was left over is all this what we can see. His mind was so vast. He compiled the four Vedas. He composed the 18 Puranas. He composed Itihasa. He did everything. He taught his students and everything was going fine. But he was not happy. There was a lot of restlessness in his soul. And no matter of reading of the Vedas, meditation, nothing was helping him. And he was, what to do? I have no idea. And he was in a very tough dilemma. It was at this point that Maharshi Narad came. Maharshi Narad is one of the foremost proponents of Bhakti. He is the Manasaputra of the Creator. And when he looked at Vedavyas in this condition, he said, Yes, what you are experiencing is the beginning of the journey towards Bhakti. So then Vedavyas asked, What is this called Bhakti? What is the nature of Bhakti? And if bhakti is really an important path, how does it compare with the other paths of karma marg, of jnana marg, of yoga marg, by which we can attain the transcendental? A comparative analysis. Then the next question which came to his mind was, how do I practice this bhakti? And the fourth question which came in his mind was what are the marks of a bhakta? It is these four questions which are answered in Narad Bhakti Sutras. And when Maharshi Narad gave this information there was a shift in the heart of Veda Vyas Mani. And suddenly, satisfaction, joy, happiness started coming forth within. He was no ordinary soul. And he, everything was ready with that small trigger which Maharshi Narad gave. Shift took place within. And all the restlessness went away and he was content in the presence of the Lord. He forgot that Maharshi Narad was here. He forgot everything. Maharshi looked at Ved Vyas Muni and said, Okay, now my job is done. He said, Okay, I am going. What you have experienced, please Pen it down. Maharshi Ved, uh, Narad Muni, sorry. Maharshi Narad walked off and Ved Vyas Muni, he was sitting there full of bliss and joy. From there itself, he said, okay. And then he composed the ultimate treatise, the treatise on Bhakti, which is known as the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the highest form of bhakti, the treatise on bhakti. But that came through the Narad Bhakti Sutras, these sutras which Maharshi Narad gave. They formed the basis of that experience. And it was this experience which was transmitted in the form of the poetry. So that is what is the Narad Bhakti Sutras. 
and since we are also people of of course vastly inferior to vedvyas ji but we have the same question what is the nature of bhakti what is this what does it mean what happens let me try and understand it we want a comparative analysis we want to know how to practice it and we want to know the symptoms of a person practicing it all of this is there in bhakti narad bhakti sutras that is why the text narad bhakti sutras has been chosen for the next round of swadhyay we began our journey in swadhyay more than an year ago because we are practitioners of yoga let us try and understand yoga better began with the yog sutras of maharshi patanjali samadhi path but yog is not enough you need the knowledge of the vedas the vedantic knowledge therefore we picked up the prakaran granth of tattva bodh then we went into the sadhan path we completed tattva bodh we went into vibhuti path and now as we approach the state of kaivalya we will first work with bhakti we are hopeless creatures we need multiple supports to pull us up one thing is not sufficient because our minds are jumping here and there so therefore a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of that judiciously is essential that is an integrated approach which param guru swami shivanand ji advocated which gurudev swami Nir- satyanand ji swami niranjananand ji pithadeshwari satyasanghanand ji speak about they swami shivanand ji spoke of bhakti in action serve love give so then if bhakti in action is what was told and is what is being taught and practiced what is bhakti exactly let us understand this because once you understand then you can practice better if you only keep understanding you cannot practice you need to have the combination of both it is something like you have a map you look at the map and you know exactly how to go and you have gone into all the details of how to go which vehicle to take what to fill what not to do everything but if you never actually go suppose that's a map of the sea and you have to go on a voyage but you never go you don't put a foot into the sea you are sitting on the seashore looking at the map planning strategizing thinking what could happen and everything you are not going to reach the destination at the same time if you say oh let me not waste any time you just jump up pick up a boat and start paddling one in million chance that you will reach your destination so many more chances that you will miss it so therefore you need both together the map and the practice of going when they go hand in hand then success can be guaranteed so in the same way we need to understand how to practice bhakti what is bhakti and then implement it in our life to be able to do this is the aim of the swadhyay satra on narad bhakti sutras and i plan to do it over 3 months they are just 84 sutras in 84 minutes we can finish it off 
one and a half hours and information can be transmitted. But that will be like water off a duck's back. It will all flow away. Nothing will stay. If we want it to go within, then we need to go slowly, step by step, step by step. Therefore, the methodology is that every Sunday, this time, 6.15 to 7.15, 7.30, we will meet and we will discuss some sutras. The meaning of the sutras, the discussion on that and try to internalize it. And during the week, you are expected to think over them, mull over them, allow them to get internalized and observe what is happening. Observe yourself. If you don't observe yourself, that knowledge will stay outside. It will not come within. And mind you, this is a path, a journey for sadhaks who have realized that they don't know. If there is anyone who feels that they have already reached the pinnacle of bhakti, then this swadhyay is not needed for them. We, at least I, I don't know about you, I know that I have not reached the destination. I am very far from the destination and I have to walk towards it. And so therefore, to walk towards it, I need to make efforts. This swadhyay Satra is for such sadhaks who know that I have to reach this destination and I am away from the destination and I have to work towards it. This is how we have to think over, observe things within and things during the day. It does not mean that since I am practicing bhakti, I don't do anything else. No. We do everything but with an added layer of insight and that is what will help us go deeper and deeper in bhakti and a day will come that we will have the darshan the darshan is not possible with our limited self for that darshan arjun needed divya netra Divyam dadami te chakshuhu. It is only when divine intervention takes place that we can have that darshan. There are stories of all bhaktas, so many saints. Maharashtra, India is full of such stories. If there is one thing which is common, is that they had to suffer a lot. When we say suffer, it is in our understanding. For them, it was not suffering. But for in our understanding, it was suffering. Take the story of Meera Bai. Take the story of Bhatta Prahlad. Take the story of Santa Shiromani, Tukaram Maharaj. Or any Bhakta, you will find they have had to undergo a lot of trials and tribulations. This path is not easy. But if we are able to connect to that deeper source, then everything becomes very easy. For Mirabai, life was not difficult. Life was joy because Mere to Giridhar Gopal Dujo na koi. For her, Nothing else mattered. For us, everything else matters. He doesn't matter. He is the last priority in our life. Everything else is the first priority. And then we go to him and say, Oh, you are not giving me darshan at all. 
because we don't give him priority. Him or her is the same thing because we are in the dimension where we differentiate between him and her. That transcendental reality is beyond all these. For our sake of communication, we use terms. The effort of this Swadhyaya Satra is to initiate and deepen this journey. The idea is not to culminate this journey. No. Culmination is far away. If Shabari needed 80 long years to get the knowledge of Bhakti so that she can start practicing it, we are much further away. Think to yourself, are you ready to be in the form of Shabari? Where everybody is ridiculing you, left, right and center. Yet you stick to the guns. Not because it is your whim or fancy. It was not her whim or fancy. It was because her guru told her, Look Shabari, you are going to have darshan of a great personality called Sri Ram. Get ready. And she accepted that. So, there is complete surrender. And once you surrender and you walk that path, there will be difficulties, but there will be clarity also. So life of Tukaram Maharaj, full of difficulties. But every difficulty took him closer and closer to the destination. So this is the path we want to begin with. We are far away from it. This is also the path which is spoken of in it is hinted of in the yogic texts. Those of you who have studied Maharshi Patanjali's Samadhi Pad, there he says that you can achieve the ultimate goal by being born with lot of merit or by doing this sadhana or by that sadhana, each sadhana harder than the before. And then ultimately he says Ishwara Pranidhana Dva or by Ishwara Pranidhan. Then again, in Sadhan Pad, he begins with mentioning Ishwar Pranidhan, Tapaswadhyayeshwara Pranidhanani. These three become Kriya Yoga. These three are important. He did not just speak of Tapa. He did not speak only of Swadhyay. He included Ishwar Pranidhan. But if we just work with Ishwar Pranidhan, we can go to the ultimate that is bhakti. So, this is a journey wherein we can start understanding how to connect to the Lord and to become the medium of the Lord. The Bansuri of Krishna was very dear to Krishna because he could blow whichever tune he wished into the Bansuri. She was totally empty. She had no preferences. You don't play, that is also fine. You play one tune, that is also fine. She had no preferences. We have lots of preferences. We need to empty ourselves. But how to empty ourselves? That we need to know. That is what we will come to know in the Swadhyaya Sutras. So therefore, this journey which we will be taking is that of self-discovery through the study of Narad Bhakti Sutras. Every day, you should spend some time chanting the Sutra because the Sutra has an impact and when you chant it, it goes deep within. You may or may not understand it, but it activates certain centers within that supports, that accentuates, that increases the impact of our study. So you do that. You try and understand intellectually and 
when you are living your life then again you try and observe what we have studied and how is it relevant to me in my situation that is what we have to do so that is the story of narad bhakti sutras the swadhyay of narad bhakti sutras and now a few nitty gritties those of you who would like to join the course some of you who you have already joined the course those who would like to join the course should kindly fill up that form and all such people who have filled the form we will form a whatsapp group and in this whatsapp group all the information about the swadhyay will be given secondly we will be using a platform whose link will be given to you by enrolling on that platform you will be able to access all the recordings so whatever we have spoken today after two days or three days if you say oh i i'm not sure what was that let me go and check that is available that recording will be available the pdfs will be kept over there so you are able to go back at your own pace and connect and understand that better so you will need to enroll on that that doesn't need anything else you just need to uh, put in your username and password and then from next sunday i think it is 11th of yeah 11th of august every sunday 6:15 to 7:15 and sometimes if needed 7:30 we will be spending time together 5 to 7 to 10 sutras every week we will cover and we will try and keep ourselves on this and a request there is a whatsapp group which we have created called as the discussion group i would be very happy if you use this group for discussion on bhakti based on the narad, narad bhakti sutras and the commentary given by param guru swami shivanand ji maharaj he has spoken i am not so interested in your opinion i am interested in the opinion of masters who have actually experienced that should be the bhav that should be the orientation and when we don't understand something then we try to discuss and try and understand that better when we are studying in college we pick up a topic and we read through it and then we discuss amongst friends when we are discussing amongst friends we don't speak about vada pav or pav bhaji or pasta pizza cold drinks or what we had a nice time on the movie we don't discuss that in the study time we study on this topic make use of this discussion group in that manner it is intended for this so that by discussion my knowledge is shared with others their knowledge is shared with me and together we learn and we go better so make use of this discussion group and discuss about bhakti over here this way we are able to go deeper and deeper and deeper better and better and better and we become better human beings and remember swami shivanand ji and swami ji swami satyanand ji have explained one thing very clearly in fact even the scriptures speak of this the definition of bhakti as per the sanskrit texts is not bhaja pujaya it, it bhakti comes from the root bhaja but explaining bhaja they have used the explanation as bhaja sevayam not bhaja 
पूजा याम वी कनेक्ट भक्ति विद भज पूजा याम आई सेट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द मूर्ति ऑफ द लॉर्ड आई लुक एट हिम एंड टीयर्स आर रोलिंग डाउन माई आईज ओ यू आर माई एवरीथिंग आई एम यू आर एवरीथिंग एंड ऑल दैट नॉट नेसेसरी भज सेवायाम इफ वी रियली वॉन्ट टू गो टू दैट लेवल वेर परमहंस राम कृष्ण वॉज दैट काली वॉज इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिम बट काली वॉज नॉट देयर काली वॉज हियर ही वॉज काली एंड देर वॉज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन हिम एंड काली दैट वॉज द एक्सपीरियंस विच परमहंस राम कृष्ण हैड बट टू बी एबल टू रीच दैट लेवल वी नीड टू स्टार्ट विथ सेवा सर्व लव गिव that is the foundation hard work with perfection without expectation and unconditional love i do something for you and then when what you expect does not happen then immediately there is a reaction no i do it for you i have done my dharma now what you do is up to you that is bhakti in action the scriptures all of all great sages speak of the same thing in different terms this is what we have to practice in our life then bhakti starts blossoming so this is how we will be working towards for the next 3 months Three odd months, and if you have any doubts, anything, we still have some ten minutes or so where we can try and clear the doubts or any queries which you have relating to the course of Swadhyaya Sattva. So, if you have any doubt, please unmute yourself and ask. Thank you, Swamiji. No doubt. I want that. Uh, I want uh, to just confirm that uh, your voice is not clear. Can you speak a bit louder, please? I confirm. I want to confirm that we can hear you. अभी आ रही है आवाज या गो हेड मैं कंफर्म करना चाहती हूँ पहले का आ, मैंने किया नहीं है पतंजलि फिर भी मैं ये अटेंड कर सकती हूँ आप भक्ति नारद भक्ति सूत्र कर सकते हैं और साथ साथ आ, आप वो अध्ययन भी करेंगे तो ज्यादा फायदा होगा आपको If, even if you have not done the previous swadhyayas you can do narad bhakti sutras but if simultaneously you also start that that will be more beneficial so much if we don't have that uh, copy of narad bhakti sutra in pdf will be given na yes i will be giving all of that you don't need to have a copy of that i will be uh, we will be having a discussion like how we had done for uh, the patanjali swadhyay for tatva bodh uh, there will be the sutra over there there will be the explanation the break up and the pdf of that will be put into this uh, platform and you can go, go there and access it at any point of time so and i don't have that first uh, samadhi padas videos and okay so uh, after this session you just send me a message separately so that it remains in my mind and uh, we will work to i ab dekh lenge usko uh, i will share that with you Swamiji, I had a question. Yes. Um, um, Swamiji, I've never heard of Narad Bhakti Sutras. I've heard of 
Bhagavatam and other uh, things, but I've never heard of Narad Bhakti Sutras. Um, can you just explain what that, um, like, you see, the origin uh, of it, maybe? Yeah, yeah, thank yeah that you. is what I had explained just uh, some time ago. You see, uh, there was a time when Veda Vyas, the author, the compiler of the four Vedas, the 18 Puranas, the Itihasas, he was once sitting in his ashram and he was feeling restless. He was feeling whatever I have done is, no, you know, there was no joy in it. And it was at this time that Maharshi Narad came and Maharshi Narad explained to Bhagwan Vyas that look, what you are experiencing is because what all you have done till now is plain, pure intellect. You have not brought the bhakti ras in it. So then there was a discussion between Bhagwan Vyas and Maharshi Narad. And Maharshi Narad gave him the entire essence of bhakti in 84 sutras. Why is it that we call it a sutra? It is important to know. There is a definition of sutra. It says, Swalpaksharam asam digdham saravat vishvato mukham astobham anavadyam cha sutram sutra vido viduhu. What is a sutra? It is Swalpaksharam. Very cryptic, like this WinZip file which we have. It is zipped into it. When you Unzip it. There's so much knowledge which comes. Swalpak Sharam. But it is a soundik dham. Absolutely clear. Crystal clear. There, there is no ambiguity there. Saravat Vishwato Mukham. It contains the essence of everything. Astobham. It does not create ripples. Anavadyam. It is transcendental because there is something between the lines which has to be picked up. It conveys that too. When it does all of this, that is a sutra. So, sutra is like a compressed knowledge capsule. And when you take that capsule and unfold that capsule from the seed, the tree emerges. So many things become apparent. That is a sutra. So in 84 sutras, he gave the essence of bhakti to Bhagwan Ved Vyas. And based on this experience, Bhagwan Ved Vyas actually composed the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Narad Bhakti Sutras is the basis of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, so much, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Samuji. Okay, ji. so Thank you, so now, uh, those of you who would like to join this Swadhyaya Satra and who have not yet uh, joined, they should uh, fill up that form. There is a link uh, to the website where there is a form. Fill that up, and everybody who is a part of that. I will create a group and in this group, I will be uh, putting all the information. You can ask questions in this group. This group is not only for information, but if you have any questions, you can ask in this group so that it helps. And uh, then we begin from next Sunday, 6.15 India time, Sunday. So let us conclude. Namo Narayan. We will conclude with Shanti part. Sit straight, preferably in a meditative posture. Eyes gently closed. Hands on your knees in Dnyan or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. 
awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in and I am breathing out. And I am aware I am breathing in. I am aware I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for some time. Now bring your awareness to your Brumadhyaya. At the Brumadhyaya, visualize the form of either your Guru or your Ishtadevata or a brightly burning candle flame. Maintaining your awareness on this, we shall chant the mantra Om three times followed by the Shanti part. Inhale deeply. Om. Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma amrutam gamaya, sarvesham swasti bhavatu, sarvesham shantir bhavatu, sarvesham purnam bhavatu, sarvesham mangalam bhavatu, Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Om Tryambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukamiva Bandhanam Rityor Mukshiyam Amritat Om Shanti 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 Hands in Pranamudra Twameva mata chapita twameva twameva bandhush chasaka twameva twameva vidya dravinam twameva twameva sarvam mama deva deva twameva sarvam mama deva deva twameva sarvam Mama Deva Deva Hari Hi Om Hari Om Tatsat Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, to your brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Ariyom, Tatsat, Namo Narayan, Jai Ho. Namo Narayan Swami, Namo Narayan Swami. Namo Narayan Swami, Namo Narayan Swami. Namo Narayan Swami.